morning everyone today is tuesday the 17th of march anyway um as the title would suggest i just wanted to chat a little bit about uh coronavirus confusion and no i don't have any answers for you i am confused so join me won't you um i yeah i'm getting I know it's a personal choice whether to feel overwhelmed or not by all the information going on out there and to a degree it's self-inflicted from maybe too much reading or whatever but I'm sure a lot of people are in the same boat and here's here's the confusion first of all we know that we can't everyone should know better these days than like blatantly believing anything that they see on the news or official news stories you have to look at it with a degree of um you know open-mindedness and and healthy skepticism so that's one thing but if we do rely on on the news alone at the moment it is quite you know painting the situation in, in quite a big you know serious light um i have been spending a bit more time on facebook lately because every second article is someone sharing something about coronavirus and if i see an article that looks sort of scientific or credible or you know f f an interview with someone who is in the know then i grab on that because you want to know the facts right um but those seem to be few and far between like it's uh, if anybody knows of a credible source where you can get up-to-date information please let me know i and then you see articles that are like talking about schools shutting down and um and you know like you hear on the news like in uk they're talking about 70 year olds going into lockdown for four months which seems insane and then you, so you see these articles on facebook and you skim the comments because let's be honest that's where all the entertainment is and you get there's a ton of people I would say they're in the minority but there is a ton of people saying oh it's just a cold it's just a flu it's overblown and um and then then you sort of start to think well well for for one thing my immediate reaction is that these people are being um disrespectful to those that have died from from this obviously you can die from the flu people do die from the flu uh, that's not uncommon so then I start to think, well, is that is that the case? Is it just a bad flu? And then, like, I left a comment and one saying, there is a flu vaccine, there's no vaccine for this. And for this, something I've heard, which I mentioned the other day, is that the, the virus is more concentrated in the throat and therefore easier to spread through the air. So I don't think you can just pass it off as a flu. But there, then someone chimed in and was like, the flu vaccine does absolutely nothing this has been proven and then i'm like well i'm not going to argue with you because i haven't done any research on this so there's no point me chipping in on that but my point is and i'm not trying to add to the confusion here that's, <laughs> this is not the point of the title of the video it's just to say it is confusing and uh, so it's confusing to know uh, who to believe what to believe and what you meant to do um i lindsay and i uh made the decision not we had travel plans to go to sydney next week and there's no current restrictions on domestic travel but <clears throat> they are recommending to avoid like crowds of over 500 and whatever and obviously airports are busy places probably not as busy at the moment but um it, airplanes are germy places anyway we decided not to go because we don't want to uh, be in a germy airplane and then pass that along to the people that we're visiting who would include Lindsay's grandparents parents and whatnot 
And the other thing was that we realized if we happened to be unfortunate enough to get sick while we were away, we'd have to quarantine ourselves in Sydney in either um, my mother-in-law's house or my brother's house for two weeks. And that idea was just no go. Like it's one thing being trapped inside your own house for two weeks, but someone else's where you don't have all your creature comforts and can just chill out and watch what you want in TV and have your computer and your books. Like, no, sorry. So deal breaker, we're not going. Um, the other thing I was uh, questioning whether to send Jed to daycare yesterday. Now he only goes to a family daycare, which is four other kids. And I did get an email from them saying that their stance on this, that is that is if schools close they will close so they're sort of taking the lead from that they're also saying that if your child is sick in any way any sign of sickness whatsoever um do not send them and if they arrive sick they will you they will not be allowed to stay and you have to sanitize yourself and then hand sanitize when you arrive da, 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 da. that's all well and good as we know with this virus like you can be sick and not show symptoms for a couple of days so you know which is the case with a lot of viruses but um so you know it's one thing to have those precautions but it doesn't mean that just because someone appears well that they are <clears throat> but anyway um we made the decision to send jed because we thought well, if we decide not to send him tomorrow, that's as good as deciding not to send him for months because that's how long they reckon this is going to hang around for. So, <coughs> off he went. Um, my friends and I had a discussion about playgroup today, which is more people. There's about 30 kids and uh, the same amount of adults, I guess. And we've decided to instead just for the time being to have the to meet at one another house at one another's houses and play so just at, like a small group of us so that's what we're doing today it it is very very hard to know what to do though um i think the one thing that is making me definitely take precau precautions at least some precautions at least is the fact that knowing that it's the the older you are like the older pop population are more susceptible to this and if they've had a sick they're either sick or immunocompromised they're more likely to catch it now as i've shared on this before my mum has recently been very sick very very sick she had sepsis she was in the icu for hospital up all up for three months icu for a big chunk of that and sepsis is one of the things that can happen um through the course of coronavirus if you get very ill so i have recent firsthand very real experience of what it's like to have a family member in the icu with sepsis fighting for their life and and, and in a life-threatening situation and one i don't want my mum to be back in that situation again because this is very recent she her system is probably not yet like built up to scratch again to be able to handle this virus like if she were to get it i don't i you know i, I think she that like that's not i don't want to speculate on it but you know what i'm saying it, it might not be a good situation. But having that knowledge of what it's actually like to go through all that, it helps me to take it more seriously and, and you know, want to take it seriously even if it is blown out. But is it blown out? I don't know. Like, that's the thing. And so I guess for one thing, I've answered my own question. I probably need to stop bothering looking at the comments on the the um facebook posts even though they they can be very interesting but they 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 do make you worry a lot and then they do sometimes make you go eh, is this really it's just it's just the weirdest situation that i think 
any of us have ever found ourselves in and um, I just yeah I'm confused if anyone has, yeah yeah are you guys confused uh, so I'm also feeling very very sympathetic and very just scared for people at the moment whose livelihoods whose income is threatened by this like I I know a few people whose incomes would be threatened because of the nature of their job and like it's the it's if schools shut down and people can't go to work um, that's one scenario but then there's also just like people not going out and about to eat at restaurants and um, you know shop in public or uh, you know there's all sorts of different jobs that are affected by this um, I'm feeling very grateful that my husband's job is one that is unlikely to be directly affected like he still has a job to go to and um, he can work remotely so we're very lucky on that front I'm just I feel like you just feel for people that like this situation is so messed up. But I guess we all are in the same boat with the confusion. So there is that. Uh, just have to kind of muddle through it day by day, I guess, and be guided by the news. But what else can you do? Like you, you can't go... A, you can't go against the government recommendation. So that obviously is, is good to have in in place to guide us. But um, yeah, the people that are saying that it's completely over, -sensual, over um, what am I saying, sensationalized and like political and I, I don't, I don't buy that because I, I really doubt that, um, governments would be putting the economy basically in this position if they didn't need to and surely they have to be getting their scientific info for, from credible sources so like surely to goodness it couldn't be this far overblown if there weren't a good reason for it I guess time will tell really um, but yeah, so that was Jetty just making a noise. So I'm going to go and get him up. Thank you for listening to this ramble. I know this was not helpful in providing anyone with any information, but if anything, it might, um, yeah, just where I'm sure there's other people who are confused. So maybe, maybe we can all be confused together <laughs> hello it's me again um i know i just said that i was ending it there and not talking about this anymore here's jetty but i've just seen something on the news which is a prime example of how confusing this is and it's just beyond frustrating you showing your car so a headline just flashed up and it was like boris johnson um is recommending drastic measures for pregnant women in the uk that they stay home for 12 weeks so obviously my being pregnant i'm like okay i better listen to this um the the expert that they had on i don't even know who this guy is um didn't even go into the reasons why they've decided to do this in the, in the UK. The whole interview was just Carl Stefanovic asking, who is the, the Channel 9 news reader guy, sorry this lighting's really bad, asking him if the same recommendations were going to come through in Australia. And the guy was like, no, our our own guidelines and our own information and our own report suggest which is what i knew or what i knew of that there is no greater risk for pregnant women 
catching the uh, catching the virus or um, like no greater risk to their unborn babies or passing it on and what have you so uh, they didn't go into at all the reasons why the UK is suggesting that pregnant women isolate themselves for three months um, they just said that our recommendations are completely different and show no risk so that is a prime example of how freaking confusing that is because if they plant the seed of it being such a major problem and why would it be so different in the UK than it is here what did he say can you take your dummy out I can't understand it's just frustrating it's just um and bad journalism too like why didn't he ask the guy why didn't the newsreader ask the man why it's so different in the uk the recommendations and what their sources are based upon because that's just a completely confusing and misleading news story and headline to put out there for pregnant women like not helpful ask in any way whatsoever they were also talking about how lots of people are taking their kids out of school like without the school pushing them to do that i know friends who are doing that as well um it just yet yeah, again another source of confusion of what should actually are be you happening what are you doing are you okay we're gonna have breakfast now bye Bye, Mommy. Bye, Daddy. Bye, Mommy. <laughs> Hi. So, I figured I should be a little um, diligent and look up what is going on in the UK. Sorry, this is blurry. I don't know why. Um, okay, so I looked it up, and basically, Boris Johnson has announced that everyone should exercise extreme vigilance and avoid pubs clubs offices and he said that the elderly over 70 should be extra cautious people with pre oh you can't see the window down okay let me fix that for you here we go um there you go um so people over 70, people with pre-existing health conditions and he said, quote, well, not exact quote, pregnant women should include themselves in that group, but didn't go on to explain why, as far as I'm aware, unless, sorry, I shouldn't say that because I didn't watch the video of his speech. I only read an article quoting it. So he may have gone into some resource that I'm not aware of. Um... So yeah, that's that's it. I don't really have any further info. I suppose I should watch the watch the clip, but um, yeah, I don't feel that compelled to like isolate myself for twelve weeks right now. Based on that, hi. Um, this is definitely the last update on this video. Um, it's about twelve thirty. I've just put Jed down for a nap. Um, I just got an email from my daycare provider saying that a few parents have contacted her saying that they're going to self isolate for a couple of weeks and she wants to know if everyone wants to do that then she's willing to not charge us for those days and I'm just waiting to hear back on my husband's opinion but I'm thinking of just saying we're not planning on self-isolating unless we're to, like there's a government enforced lockdown or you know the the daycare board decides that everyone should do that i t tell me if i'm missing something here but i actually don't see the point in single families just deciding to isolate for a period of two weeks um, similarly, I'm seeing like individual businesses saying they're closed for two weeks. Honestly, I feel like, am I missing something or is there no point in that? 
to my way of understanding the point of having like a two week lockdown where everything's shut where everybody's body's being told to stay home is that during that time the virus can settle and no one's catching it off one another but if it's just like single families deciding to isolate for two weeks sure you guys aren't going to catch anything for two weeks but once you come out of that isolation if the rest of the community has been going about business as usual then the virus is still going to be around for you to catch so I just I don't really understand I get people not wanting to catch it but honestly I see I seriously am I missing something I don't understand uh, just yet another piece of the confusing coronavirus mystery so with that I actually am gonna leave this here because I'm gonna probably go edit and upload thanks for um, joining me on my ramble as I said and uh, let's hope that in the coming days and weeks there's less confusion more clarity better direction and whatnot thanks for watching and I, I think I won't do another video on this topic unless there seems to be a good reason to because it'll just be me, ram me rambling so I'm just going to get back to my normal mum lifestyle type stuff but anyway I hope everyone is well and uh, yeah I'll talk to you soon bye